So, it's an interesting design. This is the, the transformer. That is the coil for suppressing high frequencies from, sorry, for suppressing low frequencies from the, the power supply that is uh, meant to suppress 50 Hz with these two electrolytic capacitors and now let's check them. This is nowadays replacement. So the whole capacitor, this one, can be replaced with that one. And this is what I'm going to do now, but I'll probably leave those here just not connected, but I will leave them here. And I see that one, one capacitor has been cut off. I'm not sure why, probably it was uh, completely dried off, but somewhat it did something with this radio since, uh, since, since the wire is missing. And fortunately I have the schematics, so I will check uh, where this wire should come from. And it's no wondering that, uh, that it had a lot of noise in, in audio. And yes, that, that one over here is for, for the tone, it's tone selector. This looks nice, just a little bit of cleaning. And actually, after all, the whole radio looks, uh, looks quite okay. So, now let's just replace, replace these capacitors and see where this wire should, uh, should go. I will try now to explain you the situation with, uh, with this radio and uh, electrolytic capacitors. We have two and this is exactly like, uh, like it's supposed to because we have this schematic here and you can see that we have two electrolytic capacitors. One is over here before the coil and the next one is over here after the coil. So the difference you can, uh, you can see immediately that that is that second uh, electrolytic capacitor it's connected uh, directly to the ground that means to the chassis uh, with its um, negative pole and the first one before the coil is connected to these uh, resistors so negative pole should have some resistance 87 plus 37 ohms toward the, the chassis toward the, the mass actually so this electrolytic capacitor is, uh, has been cut it off and you can see that over here that wire, that wire is uh, cut it, so we don't, this, this capacitor is not in function and that one is, is connected. So it's a, a little bit confusing with the, this capacitor, I think, because it is connected the way that this electrolytic capacitor should be connected over here. But this is not, uh, this is not electrolytic capacitor. So next thing I'm, I'm going to do is to investigate uh, what actually this capacitor does here. If uh, somebody, maybe somebody uh, replaced the electrolytic capacitor with, the, with normal capacitor and uh, that, is, that is not good, that, that's also uh, can probably cause this uh, large hum that we hear in, in the loudspeaker. And the coil I've been mentioning so far, let's take a look again. The coil that is over here is, uh, is this coil. So I have checked with the, with the instrument, one, <clears throat> one part of this coil, one wire, is connected directly uh, with this electrolytic capacitor, other is connected uh, to, to the filament of uh, AZ11 and that is, uh, that is correct. And this capacitor here is connected as it looks like instead of electrolytic capacitor and that will not work. So my next steps are to, to disconnect this capacitor, place the replacement, new capacitor, and then I will most likely take off this capacitor and I will add new one as well.
Now we can summarize what has been done so far. So I have replaced uh, this capacitor, actually that one, this is the old one, and this little one is, uh, is new. That is all that it takes uh, nowadays. You can see how big those original electrolytic capacitors were. And there is another one. That black one is another electrolytic capacitor. That is a um, new one and it's a replacement for this electrolytic capacitor over here. So the coil, the suppressor actually for, um, for the alternating current of uh, 50 Hertz is also in use now. All works well. I had to put it back to 220 volts again because it seems that uh, this transformer cannot give uh, that much power without, uh, without reducing uh, voltage dramatically. So when it's turned back to 220 and power supplied by 230 volts, it gives the correct voltage and AZ11 has exactly 4.0 volts on, on the filament. This is uh, ECL11 audio tube and it works. I have uh, connected just wires, plain wires into gramophone input and when I touch, uh, when I touch one you can hear the buzz hum in, uh, in loudspeaker. So we know that the audio part uh, works correctly. I will now switch to, to some radio band. That should be short waves. But we, can, we cannot hear, hear anything. This is the antenna. And nothing happens. Absolutely no change in in sound. Like the high frequency part is, is completely dead. So what we know so far is that audio part is, is working and I will have to check those tubes. This is warm. It's quite hot so at least the filament is working. This one as well. It has heating. Okay, so those two tubes are, are working, but we will see what, uh, what we are missing. And so far radio part, that high frequency part is, is not working at all. So this is our next step to find an issue.